Welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast, where we sit down and have real conversations with business leaders that have been where you are. During these interviews, we'll dive into what it takes to improve systems and champion processes that maximize performance. Each week, our trailblazing guests share their experiences and understanding of the workforce to help inspire change, challenge our thinking, and share what it takes to successfully travel the road to profitability. Now here's our host, co-founder and chief evangelist of About Time and WorkMax, Mike Merrill. Hello and welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Merrill, and today we are sitting down with Melissa Castle. And Melissa is the office manager at Executive Elevator, a multi-generational construction company providing routine monthly service, repairs, and modernization to electric and hydraulic elevators. Pretty interesting uh, specialty trade, of course. Um, so today, Melissa and I are going to talk about the importance of getting data collected digitally and uh, in a mobile environment, right? Also, um, how modern construction companies and teams can enjoy this type of technology, and also how these types of tools can help companies engage more with their employees as well as their clients and customers. So we also want to discuss the best practices for ensuring that this data that's collected is also shared and utilized and leveraged as effectively and efficiently as possible. So thanks for joining us today, Melissa. Excited for the conversation. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Awesome. (laughs) So let's talk about just at the very top here. Why do you feel like um, this type of data collection and these digital forms are so crucial for your day-to-day business? Well, In our business, we have a lot of data that has to be collected and taken from the field and brought back to our main office and then delivered to our customers. And we have the burden of just record keeping for all of the elevator units. So forms in general are just, you know, they're just really important to collect data. That's that's essentially what a form is. It's collection of data. Got it. Okay. Well, well, that makes great sense. So, how are you using those um, those forms and that that digital data to better communicate with these clients and your employees? Well, one of the questions. So, we do elevator maintenance on a monthly basis. So, our tech goes out, services the elevator. It's like an oil change on your car, kind of. But we're not changing the oil of the elevator. But that's essentially what it is. They go, they right. they clean, they make sure it's running well. And the customer often goes, well, what do I get for my my money every month that I'm paying? And so every month having that receipt that we can send to the customer to say, hey, this is, this is what we do on a monthly basis. But if there's a repair or something goes wrong or we're changing a battery or adding oil or, or something out of the scope of maintenance, then that's why you're getting charged for it because it's not included in in your maintenance. This is what you get for your monthly maintenance fee. This is what's extra, basically. Got it. So these tickets are validating the work that's being performed and then anything additional and extra that had to be done to make sure they're operating properly. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're also taking, you know, because our guys have eyes on these elevators every day or every month, they're like maybe a button's broken that needs to get fixed or something's wearing out or something might need to get addressed. Not immediately, but that communication needs to come back to the office. So we have our customer facing forms and we have internal forms and they don't necessarily overlap because some stuff we don't want the customer to see and maybe they don't understand. Like they don't know that, you know, this thing is going to cause a major issue. It's really not a big deal. We can do it at the next service, but the office needs to know about it so we can order the part or get it scheduled or, or something like that. Got it. So do you have utility with these types of uh, forms to um, keep track of better, history of issues or does it ha- are there trigger points or other areas where you're actually you know getting ahead of maintenance that maybe maybe needs to be done early because something's getting to a certain point oh absolutely so just this week i think yesterday i was looking at billing a customer we keep adding oil to this elevator and i was able to say hey you know we're continuing to bill this customer for oil like let's, we need to quote a repack on this job because they keep using oil. Like that's not a normal thing. You don't 
it's like your car leaking oil and you probably need new seals. So we got to replace the seals. So that that's something that has to get bit out so that we stop replace, you know, continuing to put oil in this, this elevator. And I was able to see that relatively quickly, like within probably six weeks where paper forms are just challenging. We recently switched to digital forms in like last September and the paper forms would like roll around in somebody's truck, they'd run them over, they'd sit on somebody's desk and then you'd have to put them together and then somebody would have to physically go, oh my gosh, there's these two forms. And and it would take a year before those two forms got in the same place and figured out that there might be an issue there. But this one, I was able to say six weeks later, hey, this elevator needs a repack. We need to bid this. Mm. Okay. I love that. And I can only imagine in you're a California company, so in California traffic and with fuel price and everything else going on, I can only imagine what the savings could be at digitally transferring that data as opposed to physically having to deliver any type of paper. Oh, for sure. Like cutting down on the cost of the guys driving the paperwork back to the office is huge. And I the loss, I cannot even quantify the amount of papers that come in chewed up, spilled coffee. I don't know what they do to them. Like they're dirty. They've been ground in the dirt. I, I, it's so hard to get a piece of paper back to the office without being a total disaster. Yeah, I love that. Uh, one of the one of the phrases we use here a lot uh, in our software company is, you know, when communicating with customers, bad news early is better than bad news late. So um, I can imagine being able to turn that feedback around. Like this elevator needs a repack. You know, we, we need to jump on this right away and letting them know ahead of time as opposed to after the fact when it's a major issue and all of a sudden they get this huge bill without a lot of notice. So is that has that helped with your communication with customers and their confidence in what you're doing? Oh, absolutely. I think so. We talked about this yesterday about speed and getting information to the customer. It creates more transparency with you, with your customers. If you wait a while or it takes a long time for something to happen or get them information, you're starting to feel kind of shady because, Mm -hmm. well, you know, maybe you're making something up or, you know, is this the right thing? You know, so it, the speed at which you get information to your customer is like, it establishes um, credibility with your customer with your company and and with your people. And then the other thing um, is that we have huge liability with elevators. So like the amount we get sued, like not all the time, but we've been through many lawsuits at this point and just mitigating the liability of saying, Hey, we told the customer there was this problem. We were on top of it. We did our job. We're not liable is huge. Yeah, you're you're basically making sure that your insurance isn't getting dinged when maybe it should be their insurance or their their bank account, right? Right, right. We call it a CYA quote. You know, it's a it's a <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're letting the customer know they need to do this. You know, it's up to them whether or not it gets done, but we're covered. Yeah, there you go. I uh, love that. So, so of course, so better communication, getting ahead. Um, I love right. that you brought up uh, a lot of times you'll, you'll attach that ticket with the invoice so they could see what they're getting yes. for their money, right? Mm-hmm. So every time we send out a repair invoice, we'll send out the ticket that the empl- the tech uh, filled out on the job. And most of the time it's signed by the customer, which is awesome. Um And then they can see exactly what was done, how long the guy was there, what parts got replaced, the call out. So we have a 24-7 answering service that answers our repair line. And we get a a transcript of what is going on with the elevator, what they called in for, basically. That also goes on the repair ticket. So they can see who called it in, who approved the overtime, you know, what the PO number is and all of that stuff on the ticket with the invoice. And then they can't say, oh, well, nobody called that in or we didn't do that or you just showed up on your own. 
you know, we can say, no, this is who called, this is who approved the overtime. You need to pay your bill. Yeah. So you got real time, accurate documentation of the process. So you're, you're really in a good spot. Right. Right. Basically, you know, for the most part, our customers are fantastic. They, we bill them, they pay no problem, but you always get the ones that are like, well, you know, isn't this covered? Well, no, this is why this isn't covered. And that goes into the maintenance receipts and tickets, which I think it's important to have like different forms for different things. But, and then, then you get the customer goes, well, I didn't want it on overtime. I didn't say that, you know, you could come out today that I needed it today. You know, I I could have waited till Monday and then you can say, no, this is exactly what happened. Yeah. And I know uh, one of the things that I do know about at least the elevator industry with other customers or companies that we've worked with in the past, some of those inspections and the timeliness of those and the validation of the documentation is critical because again, if there's a liability issue, it's that CYA factor that you're talking about. Do you have any stories or experiences that you've run into with something like that? Well, so recently we've had, we had one just last month where we had an entrapment and the the call came in and we dispatched our guy, but we don't have lights and sirens. So sometimes <laughs> it takes a little while for us to get there. Uh, Southern California traffic and all. And, you know, we service a very large area. I mean, Southern California is huge and we, we do pretty much all of it. So our guy is like two hours away. And so we tell our customers, okay, this is our, our ETA, but you know, you can call 911 and have the fire department get you out. Normally it's not a problem. Normally it's not a problem. The fire department for the most part knows what they're doing and won't do a whole lot of damage. But um, in this particular case, the fire department did a lot of damage in the neighborhood of had to get an insurance claim to repair the elevator amount of damage. Like I, I can't, quote how much money they'd spent to fix this elevator but it was it was a lot <laughs> and okay. um like lots of custom metal work they destroyed the doors the whole door jam um we're still fixing boards that we're finding that broke that we didn't know about in initially and um so uh just a lot of damage and so the customer turned it into their insurance company and their insurance company came after our insurance company oh, nice. and said, hey, you, you know, you must be liable for this. And we said, no, this is, this is our contract. We have our errors and emissions in our contract. This is when we were dispatched. This is what happened. And they completely dropped it. No problem. And they paid the, the customer ended up getting the claim through their insurance company. But if our paperwork wasn't together, that would have been a claim on our insurance. Yeah, by digital or by paperwork, you mean digital paperwork, right? Your documentation. Yes, digital paperwork, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, of course. Awesome. But that was an interesting one because, you know, with a paper form, you can't attach pictures. And in this case, those images were crucial in A, determining the extent of the damage, and then B, being able to bid out the repair without having to send a second person out to the job to assess it again. So we're saving money like right off the bat and not having to send the second person out there to, to check it out. Yeah. So you're adding efficiencies and even the process of, of managing the repair. Right. Right. Yeah. I love that. That's a great story actually. Um, so, so what about, uh, what about when it comes to having a competitive edge? I mean, do you have customers that, were with you during this transition and noticed a change in your processes? Or do you have companies that have said, oh, wow, we love that you do this. The other company used to have X, Y, and Z, and we didn't like the carbon paper and the triplicate and all the other (laughs) (laughs) things like that? Well, um, it's tough. We've been in business since 1984. And we are late to the game, I feel like, in technology customer facing if that makes sense i've tried you know as i've been here for 20 years now and the whole time i've been here i've been very much like pushing technology and pushing like 
Let's have stuff in the computer. Let's scan our paper tickets. Let's get stuff in the cloud, off paper. And, you know, we had, we've had, we have our very first customer that we've had, like, the entire time. They signed a contract in 1984. They are still on our service route. So a lot of our customers have been with us a very, very long time through all of the tech, you know, cell phones and, and all of the technology um, advancements. So um, I think being a little later to the game technology wise, our customers were more surprised that we hadn't already been paperless. You know, they, they were like, oh, well, our water guy is paperless and the UPS guy is paperless and the uniform people are paperless. Like, why, why are you so late to the game? So I think, you know, from our customer standpoint, they were like, what, <laughs> what have you been waiting for? We're also able to turn um, invoices around a little faster, which is a surprise for some of our customers because we were, you know, a month, month and a half out in invoicing sometimes. And now we're, we're still working on getting it, you know, like a little, <laughs> a little shorter time frame. But, uh, you know, now if I get an invoice out the next day, they're like, oh, my gosh, normally you take a lot longer to invoice. And so it's nice to be able to get a quicker return. And I've adjusted, like, due dates on those invoices for the customers just to be like, okay, yeah, I know we invoiced you a lot quicker, but you still, you know, the the due date is still the same. Yeah. So, you're, well, that's great. So you're turning billing around quicker. You're staying ahead of it. Yeah. You're not getting backlogged. They can plan ahead. And maybe you're getting yeah. paid sooner on quite a few things that you wouldn't otherwise, right? We have it to where our, our customers can go online and make their payments. And we're set up so they, if I invoice them, they can go online, make their payment. It automatically goes into the bank, records it in, in our accounting software, and I don't have to touch it. So it, that saves money on the office end. It's fantastic. It's my one of my favorite like new advancements that we do. Yeah, that's great. So they get the data and the bill and the invoice and everything quicker, and then they have a way to immediately pay it online afterwards. So right. end-to-end automation. Sounds yeah, great. so theoretically, we could get a call in the morning that says, hey, my elevator's broken. We can say, okay, we're going to dispatch a tech. We dispatch a tech out there. They repair the elevator. The ticket comes back to the office immediately as soon as their device syncs. And we say, hey, okay, we can invoice this out. We invoice it, email it to the customer, and we can technically get paid the same day, which is like, I cannot tell you how groundbreaking that is for us. Like coming, <laughs> we came like from a long way to that. Wow, that's fantastic. So that's a big change culturally as well. How do you feel like your team in the field and, and even on the office side has adapted to this new way of doing business? And do, do they like it? Are they happy about it? Do they push back? My grandparents started the company. And when my grandma passed away, we were able to implement a lot more of the technology. And she was less trusting of the computer and having stuff done automatically. And so uh, it's, it's hard and sad to say that she was kind of a roadblock to that. But we've been able to implement some stuff now that she's not here with us that we're that makes our lives easier and honestly it's been fine grandma it's fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think that story is actually pretty common right right you know small businesses um in general you know grandma grandpa or mom or dad start the company and then they keep doing things the way they've, they've always done and we were kind of in that rut and uh, we're three – I'm third generation now here at Executive Elevator. Um, I hope that we're around when my kids are old enough to do this. But especially now, you can't stay stuck in that rut or the world just going to keep going and you're going to be stuck doing the same dang thing every day and and you're just going to get, you know, stompled on by people who are doing the new big, great, flashy thing. And I'm not saying that you got to do the flashy thing. You just got to be more efficient and do things that make sense. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So what about, uh, let's talk about safety. How do you feel like this type of technology has helped you be safer and get ahead of, of safety concerns and issues? 
Well, I, safety is huge in our industry. Elevators are dangerous. You know, our guys are working with high voltage electricity, moving parts, um, all kinds of things. And elevators themselves are generally a safe form of transportation, but if not properly maintained, they can be very dangerous. So I, from, you know, the employee training standpoint and keeping track of maintaining employee records, making them fill out forms. That's the one thing I love about digital forms is you can make them read what you're writing. It's not just a piece of paper that they're going to check, 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 check. You can make them say, yes, I agree. Yes, I read this. Yes, I did this and sign on it. So that, that's a big deal in not only record keeping for the safety of our elevators, but if they took a class online, if they did extra training, if we had a safety class, you know, any of those things, they have to read what is written, check the box, say, yes, I understand, and then sign it. Yeah. And then as far as the Department of Labor or OSHA and other things, you have documentation and proof that these things happen now, right? It's all digital. It's all in one spot. I don't have to rummage through a file cabinet, file it. It doesn't get coffee spilled on it. Yeah, it's all already filed for me. Well, and I've got to imagine because if you're able to do safety training through this type of, of tool, um, you can not only ensure that they've documented and that you're, the CYA stuff's done, but also right. they are they are being briefed on those safety issues that are important for them to be reminded of, right? Right, exactly. And we, um, we're we this month, we've decided to roll out a new thing where we're taking one area of elevator maintenance, you know, that they're supposed to do quarterly on each elevator. Say, so you're going to really focus on this this month. And so I'm able to just say, hey, okay, this is a safety issue that we've been noticing in our elevators. You need to check every elevator that you're on this month and and make sure that this is okay. Yeah, that's awesome. So do you have, do you call them toolbox talks or JSAs or what, what do you call these forms that you're actually able to automate? Um, we have, we call them JHAs, job hazard oh, okay. analysis. Okay. Um, we also have a, when the... It, when they clock in in the morning and they're driving a company vehicle, they have to do a vehicle walk around for um, some of our cement plants require that that's been done. And they check to make sure that there's no cracked windshields and no leaks. They have air in their tires. They have wheel chocks and a fire extinguisher and all of the things that they need to get onto the plant. And we just have them do that every morning so that it's done because we never know when somebody's going to have to go up there. Perfect. But but then you have it documented every day then. Is that right? Every day. And then if somebody's got an issue with the tire that they keep having to fill up, we can say, "Hey, do you need tires on this car? Or, you know, you have a nail in your tr- in your tire, then we can address it and get it fixed." Yeah, so you're uh, like a look ahead. You're actually getting ahead of things before they become yeah, an issue. Yeah. We I mean, we try. It's it's a process. <laughs> Well, the good thing is that this tool is helping you be reminded to ask those questions and reminding them to be thinking of those things that they should have been thinking of typically. Anyway, for sure. Right? For sure. Well, yes. Well, and that's the thing because they'll call, they'll call somebody, you know, random person who happens to be in the office or their buddy in the field or, or somebody and say, hey, my truck needs tires. And then it just goes into this void and you, you know, you'll, They'll go, oh, three months later, they'll say, oh, I well, I told so-and-so that my truck needed tires. And then, well, it didn't yeah. get to where it needed to go. So by having a set way to do it in a form that's consistent every time, then that information can get to who it needs to go to. It's a huge, closes the communication gap. Oh, that's great. It's always nice to, you know, talk about those areas that are reducing liability, they're increasing safety, they're, those, those things are critical every day. But I do love something that you talked about earlier when you when you talk about engaging with clients and appearing and being more professional and handling handling their money like you would handle your money and and that sentiment. Do you do you have any stories or experiences where you feel like these types of tools helped you in, improve the relationship that you had with the customer? Sure, sure. So I think it all goes back to communication again, because when you're sending a form or a work ticket or whatever you want to call it back to a customer, it's just communicating something to the customer. So we had a customer who, when we were doing paper forms, 
was insistent that our service ticket be filled out exactly the same way every time. And when you have six guys on a route and we don't know who's going to that job, they're going to get filled out slightly differently every time. It just it just happens, right? So for that customer, we would pre-fill out their paper form and then have to try and figure out who was going there and make sure that form was consistent every single time or they would not pay their bill. I mean, it wasn't, we were talking about lost revenue. It was, they would not pay. And so that was kind of a pain. But now with the, the digital forms, we can make them fill it out the same way every time. We can say this field is required, this field is required, and this customer has to have a signature. And we haven't had any trouble with them since we went to digital forms. We also have, I've mentioned that we have cement plants. We service elevators at cement plants. And they are a whole like different beast in themselves with the amount of safety training and paperwork and the amount of information they need in order to pay their bill, let us on the site, you know, all of that stuff. And so we're able to customize all of their forms. Our it's like we have everybody else in this bucket and then the cement plants are over here. They're like their own little sub portion of our business. Yeah, that's great. So uh, one of the other areas that we talked about, uh, there's something that's important to the industry are keeping track of leading indicators, trying to get ahead of something before it becomes an issue. Are there any other things? I mean, you mentioned the tires and some of these other things. Are there other issues that you feel like you've been able to get ahead of uh, with these leading indicators being collected? Well, sure. I I mentioned the oil collect- like. Oil is a big deal with hydraulic elevators, and you can tell a lot about what's going on with the elevator just by how often the they have to dump the pit can. And that's on every uh, service ticket is, did you have to dump the pit can? Yes or no? If, if yes, then how much oil did you have to dump? And did you have to add oil? Yes or no? And, and keeping track of stuff like that lets us know the health of the hydraulic system and and whether or not it needs it has issues we can also go back and look at um reoccurring calls if a customer is calling and saying the elevator stuck at the third floor the elevator stuck at the third floor and month after month we're getting the same call that that elevator keeps getting stuck at the third floor or we keep getting entrapments we had another customer fairly recently who had um, had some door issues and then they had an entrapment on the weekend and the, it scared them. I mean, entrapment's never a good deal when somebody's stuck in an elevator. And unfortunately, this poor guy was in there for two hours while we, <laughs> till we got down there and let him out. But um, our employee was able to fix it. Our tech was able to fix the the problem that caused it, but we said, hey, you had a trouble call that had a door issue, and then you had an entrapment that was a door issue, and then you had another trouble call that was a door issue. Let's let's replace some door equipment here and you know, let's let's bill out this door equipment so that you don't have another entrapment related to we can never guarantee that nobody's gonna get trapped, but we can say, okay, this will solve that problem. Yeah, by definition, that's exactly what uh, a leading indicator is, right? Right, exactly. So that's awesome. So what about when uh, when you have a project? I mean, you mentioned the one customer that needed a very specific form to be filled out a very specific way. Are there other things that you're able to do to control and make sure that the correct forms are being filled out on the correct jobs by the correct people? And tell us about how that works with your system. Oh, this is one of the things that I absolutely love about WorkMax. I know it's not a WorkMax commercial, but (laughs) this is one thing that I love about WorkMax. So in the past, we had two different paper forms. We had a service ticket and we had a repair ticket and they were different. And you can tell your techs over and over and over and over again which type of ticket that they're supposed to fill out, but it never fails that they don't have it in their box or they didn't pick one up or they don't remember or they're not sure what to do because there's gray area, right? So with WorkMax, I can ask leading questions. That's one of the best things about WorkMax and their forms is you can ask leading questions that say, 
why are you on the site? Are you here for service or repair? They can go, oh, I'm here for a repair. I was sent here on a repair. So I can check that box. And it automatically brings up the questions that I need to answer. Who are you? How much time did you spend there? Uh, who are you with? What was the customer report? Why are you out here? Uh, what did you do to fix the problem? Did you use any parts? Was it an entrapment? If if no, then you can move on. If yes, we need to know, did you get them out? Did the fire department get them out? Collect phone numbers. What was the status of the elevator? You know, all of these things that you can tell them to fill out on a paper form, but they're they're not going to do it. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> you have a, a digital Oprah Winfrey on every job oh, site. <laughs> I do. I do. I have a, oh, my guys. <laughs> bless them. They, um, they do have to answer a lot of questions, but honestly, after going through several lawsuits, these are questions that we need answers to because then yeah. when the lawyer calls us and says, what position were the elevator doors in on this elevator that these people were trapped in three years ago, you know, we're not trying to track somebody down that doesn't work here anymore. That doesn't remember, you know, we can look up the form and say the doors, the elevator was at the bottom floor, the doors were partially opened, you know, whatever happened. Because, you know, statute of limitations is like two years, I think, in California for uh, personal injury. So if somebody trips and falls out of an elevator, you know, we're looking at, it could be two years before we even know that there's going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So documenting everything every day becomes critical and you never know when because it's just coming out of left field. Exactly. And often it's like the elevator didn't level to the floor. They tripped. Well, when was the time it was serviced before that happened? And you have to be able to pull that paperwork or digital paperwork. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that sounds like a, a very uh, dynamic workflow that you've been able to enjoy with these tools. Oh yes. That's, oh yes. Uh, so what about uh, what about some other things like uh, non-payment? Do you do you have issues collecting a bill sometimes where these tools are able to help you get paid at all, let alone on time? <laughs> <laughs> um, payment is a fun thing in our industry because uh, people tend to pay their bill when their elevator's broken. And we won't go fix it until uh, they pay their bill. So, you know, they people ask about our collections, and that's generally the way it goes. You know, we'll say if you're not paying your bill, we're not going to fix it till you're till you're current on your account. <laughs> you know, so that's right. helpful. But no, in general, if if they know if they can see that we are doing our job, we're being honest about what was done, we're charging a fair price for the time that we were there. You know, we we generally don't that it's good communication to be quick. I think that's the key. The quicker you are getting your bills out, the more chance you have of that person paying their bill. What what about uh, when you mentioned uh, like the lawsuits or, um, you know, litigation or pending, pending uh, disputes or your attorney, how easy is it to make adjustments to these documents as new information becomes required or available, or you gain a new project or account where they want something unique or different, how easy are you able to tweak and adjust what you're doing to fit that new project? Oh, the, the being digital, it just, you can adjust your forms on the fly, like in the field live. So we've, if I notice a problem, like an employee's not filling out a form correctly, you know, consistently, they're just, not getting it, I can think, okay, hey, maybe I need to ask this question a little differently. I'll reword it and I'll send it out right away. In the beginning, when we first launched our digital forms, we were having trouble with the guys putting their names on the form. Like, I need you to put your name and who you were with. And they just weren't doing it because it was at the bottom of the form. So moved it to the top of the form. And then I got consistent every time. And uh, I was able to do that you know, same day and, and get immediate results. Yeah. That's a great example. I love that. What about, uh, what about positive or negative observations? I mean, are there times when, uh, when you're able to recognize good work or a better, a better resolution to something or, or validate that, uh, your your company name and logo are attached to the work you're doing, you feel better about the service that you're providing because of this type of documentation. Well, um, you know, in talking to like 
customers that have had other elevator companies, uh, they they appreciate that we are so transparent and we let them know what we did. We have nothing to hide. You know, we're, we're doing our job. We're doing a good job. You know, this is what we're doing. And the more transparent you are with your customers, I think, you know, the better in general. And, you know, if you have that communication is, is a good thing. Yeah, I think uh, I think you guys are obviously leveraging this really well and, and doing a great job with it. Are there some metrics that are key that you're looking for or that you've gained from these tools, like you know, timeliness of project completions or reduction of service calls or improved quality of you know the the life expectancy of an elevator before something major needs to be done? I mean, anything like that you've been able to delve into just yet? No, I think we're still newer to digital forms. Like I said, we just were barely at a year having launched. So we still are working out kinks and and figuring it out. I think um, now going into year two will be like finally smooth sailing and kind of worked out some of the major issues that we've had. Okay. So are there... Are there things that have been surprising to you that you thought, oh, wow, this is amazing and I didn't even expect this? Oh, um, I think I expected more pushback from some of our customers. And just because they were used to getting that yellow receipt off of our two-part tickets for so long Uh and for them to go, Oh, what, what have you been doing? Like, of course we'll sign this, this tablet or because having older people managing the office, like my dad and my grandparents and stuff and them saying, well, our our customers aren't going to trust that. They're not going to trust the the digital technology where I I think I, I was even surprised that, Hey, you know, they, they're fine with it. We have gotten no pushback none at all our customers like it they like getting their receipts same day they they're just they don't know what to do with a yellow piece of paper anymore they don't want to file it so that's been fantastic that's great well it sounds like it's been just a great improvement overall and and like you guys are really poised and ready to continue to enjoy and even improve on what you're already doing so Congratulations on solving this challenge. Thank you. That, yes. Yeah, lots of companies a, still are still struggling here. So you know so what? Were, it was a huge challenge for us. Huge challenge. Well, so this has been a fun conversation. What uh, I guess before we get into more maybe the personal things and we wrap up, um, what's the thing that you hope that listeners will take away from our conversation today? I think the biggest thing that you need to think about when you're taking your forms digital or or even just creating any kind of form or paperwork in your office is what is the purpose of it? What information are you trying to collect? Where is it going? I think you need a roadmap of that data before to help you plan what you're collecting. I think that's the biggest thing. Well, that's fantastic. Well, thank you again for that. Um, I do have a couple of more personal questions uh, before we wrap up, if that's okay. Sure. All right, so let's let's talk for just a second about what do you feel like really if you were to s- sum up one thing that would be your superpower, uh, Melissa, what what would you say that is? So I saw this question on our, our questions, and we had like a, a rounder in the office about what what Melissa's superpower is, <laughs> and uh, I got a definitely not multitasking. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm definitely not a multitasker, but I think my biggest asset or, you know, the thing that makes me do really well in, in our office environment being so dynamic and so insane sometimes is that I just keep a level head. Like I very little gets me rattled. I just very much am like, is this a problem? Do I need to be upset about it? Isn't it an emergency? And if I can answer no to any of those questions, then it's just not an issue. You know, we just move forward and fix the problem. Like I don't, it takes a lot to get me rattled. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's, a, that's a great skill. I think, especially running a business like yours that could be a little chaotic. So it's, sure it's it very chaotic, well. especially with family. I think the dynamic of the family business, I could talk for 
years on that. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have to have you back on and let you talk for a little while about it. <laughs> Um, so, so also, I did notice when I was looking up your LinkedIn profile that you have a passion for photography. So what is it about photography that you love so much and, and has you excited about it? Oh, well, I do. I, uh, I don't do it as much as I want to anymore, um, but I, I, I'm a little bit of a techie person. I love the technology that goes into photography, especially digital photography. I mean, we're getting you know all digital here, but... Um, definitely like the technology aspect of it, but I love weddings. I love going to weddings. And if you could pay me to go to a wedding, like I'm all in. So, uh, that's, I, my husband and I, uh, we shoot weddings together and I just love it. I, I love weddings. Oh, that's awesome. Well, it's, it's most of the time, it's a very happy occasion for most yes. of the people there. So yes. <laughs> that's a great yeah. place to spend your time and use your talents. So uh, yeah. good for you finding that passion. Thank you. Um, you bet. So what about uh, if you were to think of a person who has most impacted your career, um, who would that be and, and what is it that, that really helped you? So this is an interesting question for me because this has been all I've done. I started, uh, you know, it's a family business. You know, you start when you're in high school, kind of working on during the summer. And then, you know, I worked through college. My degree is not in elevators or business or anything related. Um, I was going to be a ag teacher at the wow. high school level. My degree is in ag education. So I sometimes I think like maybe that helps, you know, deal with the management of people, you know, the classroom type management. Sure. I don't know. Sure. But um, as far as who has impacted me, I think, you know, my dad sat me down at one point and said, if you don't want to be st stuck here, like you need to go do something else because that's the nature of the family business, right? You keep working. And when I graduated from college, I said, you know, I would rather, I don't want to be stuck anywhere else. So uh -oh. um, I think that that moment like impacted me the most because my entire time here, I thought, well, you know, I'm stuck here, but where else would I rather be stuck? So I think, you know, my dad works so hard and um, I'm hoping that in the next couple of years, he'll be able to like take a step back and be able to retire a little bit, you know, do what he wants to do and not, not have to work so dang hard. Oh, that's awesome. Well, what a testament to your father and, and uh, what a great tribute to him as well. That's cool that he was trying to help his daughter avoid an entrapment at an elevated yeah. company. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little, little goofy once in a while. but No, uh, I like that. I like that. I'm going to have to go listen to this and be like, oh, my God, yeah, you're right. That's funny. <laughs> All right. So very last question. Um, what is one tool or process that you really couldn't live without in your professional life? What What's the thing that you just count on? Oh, man. Internet. When the internet goes down at the office, like nobody, nothing gets done. <laughs> I, I, it sounds like so vague, but um, we use and utilize a lot of tools and I think they work the best together. I think if one goes down, everything kind of goes down. I, I, and I think that's a good thing. You know, you got to kind of make a cohesive um, group of software or tools that make sense to you, but you know, if, if any of them go down, we have an issue. Oh, I love that. Well, that's a, that's a great pitch for cloud-based computing, right? You're, uh, you're enjoying the technology that's available to give immediacy and real-time feedback and benefits, right? Oh, yeah. No, cloud is awesome. Being a busy person and a mom who's, like, got to do all the kids stuff. And, you know, I shoot 11 o'clock last night. We had a... Uh, I needed to get somebody a, a WorkMax uh, code because they were up at a cement plant and needed to fill out their ticket. So, like, you know, I was able to do that in bed at 11 o'clock at night without <laughs> having to drive to the office. It was awesome. Well, that's good to know. And sorry to disturb your sleep. But oh, well, that's, you know what? That's the nature of the beast here. It's, it doesn't end. People get in elevators all the time. 
Love it. Well, that, that this has been a really, really fun conversation. And Melissa, I've really enjoyed getting to know you more and, and having you on as a customer, and, as well as hearing your story and, and uh, exciting and unique and uh, kind of a very interesting business of the elevator Thank you. industry. Yes. It has its uh, ups and downs. <laughs> okay. Now you finish with the dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. And we'll, we'll keep in touch and look forward to continuing forward and, and working with you again in the future. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on the mobile workforce podcast sponsored by about time technologies and WorkMax. If you liked the conversation we had today, or were able to learn anything new or helpful, please make sure to follow us on our WorkMax page on LinkedIn and on Instagram at WorkMax underscore and subscribe to the show on iTunes or your preferred podcast platform so you will never miss another insightful episode. Also, if you enjoyed the podcast, please leave us a five-star rating and review and share the show with your friends and colleagues. Your support means the world to us and will allow us to continue providing impactful information with others looking to improve their results in their business and in turn, their life.